at, uh, at any time. But this year, I'm not doing any Kwanzaa unless somebody calls me up to do something at the last minute. But uh, Kwanzaa is an annual thing by Dr. Karanga that he put together. It's You know, people say it's, they want to call it Christmas like an African Christmas, but, you know, it, it's his own interpretation of what we do for ourselves, you know, in celebration of uh, black culture, and and that's where black nativity falls in, right, just before that. So, you know, it, it's all about what we do as as a cultural people. Yeah, right, and oftentimes I think that we're not um, – it seems like every time I turn around, somebody is adding more and more of our culture to their own culture. Because it seems like every time you turn around, somebody else is grabbing aspects of our culture and trying to make it into theirs. Uh, it seems okay. like that's the one thing I can say about the drumming is they haven't been able to do that totally and everything. Because just think we've been able to hold on to that, unlike the blues and some of the other forms. That every time you turn around, some other cultures are grabbing it and trying to make it into their own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they do, you know, everybody, well, they see what we do is, is real and how rich it is. So, you know, everybody wants to be involved. And it's okay as long as you do it right. Exactly. And what do you say yeah, when you talk to people that are, yeah, man, I agree with you. And what do you say to people like those that are over there at Duke? Because I imagine, you know, Duke is an international college. So uh, you probably have some folks that are afraid that something like Kwanzaa or even some of the African uh, drumming is not for their culture, whereas I'm of the opinion that it's for everybody's culture. So if you talk to people that are, like, trying to make it only, say, Kwanzaa and African-American celebration or the drums as only something from our uh, motherland, but that something that the rest of the cultures can accept, what is your reaction to them if they try to bring that to you? Because I'm sure that at Duke, you probably get some conservatives that try to tell you the negative oh, aspect yeah, of things. Uh, they do, they're doing a Kwanzaa thing now at the Mary Lou Williams Center. And uh, they they asked me to, you know, send them some drummers over there to do it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's open to anybody. You know, uh, I don't know Dr. Karenga designed it that way. I don't, I don't know how he designed it. I, I would assume he designed it for everybody and everybody to deal with it, to be a part of it. That's my thing. Yeah, I would think- I'm, I'm thinking that. Yeah, that's where I feel that he he designed it for. He opened it up to anybody and everybody. Not just. No, I agree with you. Too. Yeah, I thoroughly mm-hmm. agree with you. I think that it was intended to be for everybody, and I know that the one we hold here at the Haytai, there's a little bit of everybody that comes to it. I mean, you see everybody from uh, yeah. a few folks to uh, Asian folks to. Um, a, um, I think I've seen definitely. Uh, European Americans. I've even seen some Latin Americans. So I mean, it's just a wide part of our community that mm-hmm. comes to it, and it's hundreds, if not thousands, of people as the one that here at Haytown. Of course, the big one that is held down at the Armory is mostly held at the Armory mm-hmm. on January first, and then of course there are several of them that are held during the other days of the principals. And uh, for those that are uh, listening, and uh, could you tell? Just a really quickly a rundown of the principles for the different days, just for folks that are listening that might not know those yeah. principles. Uh, you have well, I got to figure that myself. <laughs> you got um, you you what is it? Uh, Ujama, Ujama, uh, Nina. There's a bunch of them, man. I can't keep up with all of them, man. They <laughs> come. There was it seven of them. How many of them? Yeah, it, yeah, seven oh, of them. I got them right here. Yep. I got it right here. Who won? Uh, Umoja, which is Unity, uh, Kuji Jakalia, uh, Self Determination, Ujima, Collective, Work. Uh, where's the rest of them? Here, here they go. They're coming up. Um, that's Ujama? Yeah. yeah, that's all Nia. I got right now. But don't. Yeah, Nia, Kumba yeah. and Imani. Imani, yeah, we got right. Them. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Yeah, got all seven of them. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Appreciate that, Dean, and everything. Yeah. But yeah, and they all have different roles and different things of that nature. One of the things we were exactly. talking to Nikki about was just the importance of culture and how culture helps us as a people. Both in her, in her case, it was helping her go through some very hard times and things of that nature, and that's why she's working on her book and everything. And in some of our past guests, we talked about how oftentimes the principles of creativity aren't used enough 
in our education system. So I was just wondering some of your thoughts on that, because I know we've just in conversations have had conversations about that, how both you and me have talked about how we oftentimes feel that creativity isn't celebrated the way it should be in public schools and in, I would even argue sometimes even in our colleges. So I was just wondering what, how has creativity helped you in your own personal life and struggles? And also, do you think that our education system is doing a good enough job of celebrating the world of creativity? Uh, they need to do more. They need to do a whole lot more they, in, in terms of uh, what we do in, in terms of being creative and what we do as an artist. Uh, the arts really needs to be more into the school system than what it is. Uh, it's there, but it needs to be even more broad now. I'm trying to get um, what I do taught in the HBCU schools. Because it's not being taught in no HBCU school at all. And I'm talking about wow. nationwide. None. So I even schools that have so even schools uh-huh. that have a national even schools that have a national reputation of being musical schools that are HBCUs, you're not finding enough African music being taught in those schools. Because I know we've got schools that have national reputations for music, but it's more jazz, like like Central, like FAMU and things of that nature. So you're yeah. saying, as far as you can tell, none of them are teaching the true tradition of what the music is about. No, none of them. None. I, there's schools down here that's not doing it. There's schools in other areas that are not doing it. Um, there's two schools, two main schools in D.C. that need to have it, and they don't have it. Wow. Okay. And you would... Yeah, and some, and some of the HBC schools in Alabama don't have it. Wow. You would think that with all the rich history, you would think that with all the rich history and the way that we've been talking about the, um, for lack of a better term, the slave narrative with movies like Harry and Tubman that are out now. And of course, you know, every time you turn around, they're rerunning the roots from way back when. But with all the slave narrative movies that have been out there and with people understanding that our narrative includes our journey from Africa and the journey through Africa and the Caribbean, that they would be including more of our music in our college your curriculum. But what you're saying is that we're not doing that at all, and that just seems to be a, a total shame. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be a total change as of right now. As we speak, all that needs to, to change today, yesterday. Wow, wow. And, bring it in. and you know, uh, there was a couple of schools in this area I tried to get it in. They wouldn't do it. Wow. And, um, and I, you know, I, I checked a lot of these schools to see what they have, and they don't have them. They do not do what we do. That's just crazy. Now, they do, and what is they the do re- have, They do have an African dance class at Howard, but it's not part of the curriculum. And when you've given them have, reasons, what? And when you've given, when they've given you reasons, what are the reasons that they've tried to give you for the reasons that they don't have these kind of classes? Is it, is it, they yeah. claim that they can't afford it, or what? There's always a reason. They always go. They always say it's the money. They don't have the money. That's always what they they always say that you know. Um, but they, they can get it. They if they want it, they can get it. You have to want it oh, first yeah. in order to do it. Yeah. So you can't say you can't do it. Without saying you don't want it, you you gotta want it first to say, okay, let's go go ahead and get it done, make it happen. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So go ahead and get it done, and not just depend on uh, what some folks may think cannot be done. You just need to go ahead and get it done and uh, have those kind of accomplishments. So I I don't understand why they wouldn't do that and everything. Well, hey, you tell me, man. You know, I've been to the different schools and brought it up. And that's the last I heard from them. Wow. That's just amazing yeah. that they would not try to have those kind of classes and everything. Now, for folks that are, you know, trying to break into the world of doing uh, 
African drums and just world percussions and everything. What kind of advice would you give them other than the fact that you're going to run into people like this that don't want to fund what is definitely a world music and everything? But what kind of advice would you give the folks? I'm, I mean, there's young people that came underneath you. So, like, when Atiba was doing it, what advice did you give to him and just when other people that are coming even under Atiba when folks are trying to break into this world of uh, drumming and trying to do the kind of work that you've done in the past, what advice do you give them? Do a lot of studying, number one. Uh, ask a lot of questions, number two. That's one of the biggest problems. People do not ask questions, you know, in terms of how to do or anything about the culture. And and uh, if you don't ask questions, you're not going to know. And that one of my, all my teachers told me, he said, look, if you got any questions, you feel free to ask because that's the only way you're going to learn. So, uh, that's how why Atiba is is at the level that he's at today is because he knows how to ask questions. And one, he's a go getter. You know, if he if yeah. he's stuck on something, he's gonna call you up and ask you what's going on. One time oh. he came to my house, he stayed here till four o'clock in the morning. Well, wow. he, actually, he stayed up. He stayed up to four o'clock in the morning going through all my videotapes and looking at every videotape of drumming and dance on there. He stayed up to 4 in the morning. I said, look, Tiva, here's the remote control. Here's the rest of the tapes over here. I'll see you later. And I left him so in the TV. <laughs> wow. You would have got your sleep and left him right there at the TV so he could do what he needed to do in terms of learning this material and everything. And when That's you right. way back... This, he was four, Go ahead. He was fifteen years old. He was fifteen years old when he did that. Wow. <laughs> wow. He just came out of house and uh I called his mother and said, Look, he's staying over tonight. I'll I'll bring him back later and left it at that. <laughs> that that makes a lot of through, sense. He went, every, he went through every last one of my videotapes and looked at all of them. And, and well, I imagine it's even more now. But at that time, how many videotapes was it? Oh God, it was, it was well over forty. Well over forty at the time. Wow. And now it's, and that, it's well over it's well over a hundred now. Wow. So yeah. Definitely, that's a that's a lot of videotapes to be going through to learn all of these great instruments and things of that nature. But what were some of the people yeah. that, motive, that that inspired you when you were coming up? Like I said, I imagine some of them have passed on, but, of course, we've talked about Baba Chuck, but who were some of the other people, <coughs> excuse me, even among the drummers that really inspired you when you were uh, coming up? And even now, I imagine there's even some drummers, maybe even some young drummers that are inspiring you, because I do believe that inspiration can come from both the older generation and the younger generation. Yeah, well, Chipe was one of them. Richard Landrum was another one. Uh, Lucas Shea Wiles was another one. Uh, Wendell Hayes. <coughs> Nat, Bettis, and Nat Bettis is still around. I talked to him actually yesterday. Uh, in terms of the younger drummers, you have uh, Atiba, because I'm learning some stuff from him right now. You know, because Atiba, you know, he he's... Um, he knows a lot. Lamar Lewis knows a lot. Elijah Harris knows how to, you know knows a lot of stuff. So these young drummers, they picking up on stuff that we that we never seen before. So a lot of times we go to them and say, okay, what you got here, and then they'll show it to us. So I'm still learning. We all still learning. We just learning right. on a different level right now. Oh yeah. You know. And listen, man. I gotta get to uh, I gotta get to uh, Raleigh, so right now I gotta okay. get out there real quick. But, uh, well, we, but let's do this again. I appreciate you being on it. We'll definitely have to do it again. So definitely appreciate you being on the phone call. Me and Dean will wrap it up over the last couple of minutes and everything. But definitely appreciate you sharing your rich knowledge and also having a chance yes, to indeed. meet uh, Miss Nikki. And we will uh, pass. Uh, I will next time I see you, or I'll email you with her information so y'all can connect, but definitely looking forward to having you on talking some more about some of your experiences, but definitely what you shared was definitely really uh, interesting. And we'll be keeping track and by running across any of those teachers or uh, administrators and type 
I'm going to try to encourage them that they need to get some uh, of these classes that you want into those schools because I agree with you. There's some kind of classes that we need that we are not having. I mean, I appreciate what That's John right. Brown and others are doing, Ira Wiggins and others are doing in terms of the traditional jazz and even things of that nature. But I agree we got to get more African dance and African drumming classes in. We need whole classes on the blues because even though there's classes on the jazz, I don't think the blues is taught enough either. So there's a whole lot of things that need to be corrected. That's right. That's for sure, man.